Now, there's one more thing which I would like to cover before going to the point joint promises. Let's see what that point is. I've already told you that legal representative can perform the contract excluding the contracts which require personal skill. Now, let us understand what is succession and assignment. Now, I have explained you the difference between a legal representative and a legal heir. A legal heir may at times become the legal representative and legal representative may at times be the legal heir himself. But this does not hold good always. You cannot say that always a legal heir would be the legal representative or always the legal representative will become the legal heir. No, we cannot say that. So now, since we are clear with the distinction between the two, I would like to tell you what is succession and what is assignment. Succession means devolving of the rights and the liabilities of the person who has diseased, or the person who has disease. Disease means who has died. This is the spelling of deceased. It is not D I S E A S E D. That means the person who has some illness. He has some disease. I'm not talking about that disease. I'm talking about D E C E A S E D. That means a person who has died. So, whatever the rights and liabilities, whatever the assets and liabilities the diseased person had, will devolve now to his legal heir. That means now they will belong to the legal heir. This is called as inheritance in normal parlance, in general parlance, as we generally understand it. Inheritance. So whatever the father had after his death will go to the sons and his daughters or what whoever is his legal heir, whoever is left behind. So, do you think whatever the assets may be, whatever the liabilities may be, will get devolved? <coughs> no. Whatever the assets are left, that will get devolved. And liabilities will, will get devolved only to the extent of the assets. Now, let's say he had assets of 200 crores. He had rights and assets of 200 crores. However, he also had liabilities and those liabilities were to the tune of 201 crores. Now, do you think this is a correct succession? Succession will happen this way. No. As I said, assets will get devolved of whatever amount they were. Liabilities will get devolved only to the extent of assets. That means 201 crore liability will not get devolved. Liabilities will get devolved only to the extent of assets. So the legal heir will get 200 crores on one hand and he will pay the liabilities of 200 crore on the other hand. So for him net net it would be a zero sum game. He will be let, left with nothing. But there cannot be a case wherein he gets 200 crores and he pays 201 crores. That means he will have to pay 1 crore out of his own pocket. This cannot be the case in case of succession. Under succession, though the liabilities get devolved along with assets of the deceased person to the legal heirs, the extent of liabilities is restricted to the extent of assets. Liabilities cannot exceed assets. So whatever be the additional liabilities, they will not get devolved. 
he can accept liabilities only to the extent of assets. So what is assignment then? If succession is rights and liabilities of a diseased person getting devolved to his legal heir, what is assignment? Assignment then means, it means transferring of right, transferring of an asset. Let's say I have a bill of exchange in my hand and I am the drawer of it. That means I am to get money. There's some you know, debtor whom I had sold some goods worth rupees 10,000 and he said he'll pay me the amount after a month. I got a bill of exchange accepted by him. So now I have a bill of exchange of 10,000 rupees. The payment will be received by me after one month. So now what I do is I transfer this bill of exchange to you. I endorse this bill of exchange to you. Can I do it? Of course I can. We all know that a bill of exchange is a negotiable instrument. That is, it can be transferred. It can be endorsed. So I endorse it to you. Such a transaction where a right, an asset is transferred is called as assignment. Now I have transferred my right to you. I The right which I had of receiving 10,000 from my party, now I have transferred it to you and now you have the right to receive 10,000 rupees from that party. You will get 10,000 rupees. You have that right because I have transferred that right and this transfer of right is called as assignment but please remember assignment can only be done of a right or an asset there can be no assignment of a liability only the drawer can endorse the bill can a drawee endorse the bill or can a drawee transfer his liability to pay the amount written in the bill of exchange that he is accepted to someone else. Can he do that? No, he cannot. He is the first person who is required to pay. He will have to pay that. Even if he tells somebody else to pay. Let's say you draw a bill of exchange on me for rupees 10,000. Now you get the right to recover money from me. I have the liability to pay the money to you. Now what I do is, I bring up a friend. I tell you that he's my friend and on my behalf, he'll pay. <clears throat> and you also accept because you are concerned only with your money. I pay it or my friend pays it, it doesn't matter. You want your money, so you okay this thing. But on the due date, my friend doesn't pay. What in that case will be your stand? Will you say that my friend did not pay, so you know, uh, I am absolved of my liability, I am free, I am discharged. No, you will come to me saying, boss, you said your friend will pay, now he is not paid, so you pay me, won't you? You will obviously demand the money from me. So, can I transfer a liability? Can I completely transfer a liability? No. The person who has the liability, who bears the liability, remains responsible for it always. He cannot just transfer it to anybody. Whereas a right can always be transferred. And when a right is transferred, it is called as assignment. So now we come to our final point in the segment who. 
which is joint promises so under who can perform we did the promiser himself the legal representative the agent of the promiser any third parties you know third person and finally we have joint promises joint promises can also perform now it is important for us to understand who are joint promises what do you mean by the word joint promises 